this video, we're going to cover oogenesis, the production of female gametes in the ovaries. So by the end of this video, you'll understand the phases of oogenesis and how a mature ovum is produced. We're also going to break down the overview of the menstrual cycle. So let's begin this lecture with a quick review of the female reproductive system. So if you've seen the anatomy of the female reproductive system lecture, you've seen this beautiful diagram here. So let's label it. The female reproductive tract is located within the pelvis and the internal female genitalia includes the vagina, which is a muscular tube that connects the uterus and cervix to the outside of the body, also known as the birth canal. The cervix, which is the lower part or the lower portion of the uterus, it connects the vagina with the main body of the uterus. So then we have the uterus, which is a thick walled muscular organ. This is the area where the fetus develops during pregnancy. Then the fallopian tubes, which are these paired muscular tubes that are near the ovaries. And of course, we have the ovaries, the female gonads. Now, in this lecture, we're going to be focusing on the ovaries and we're going to talk about the production of oocytes, female gametes. So let's zoom in on one of the ovary here. Okay, so the ovary has several functions. The first is oogenesis, which is the formation of female gametes. Okay, the development and maturation of oocytes, immature egg cells. Ovulation, so this is the release of mature oocytes. And the synthesis and secretion of estrogen and progesterone, which are female sex steroid hormones. And also the secretion of the protein hormone inhibin. Okay, so females of reproductive age, beginning from puberty until menopause, go through cycles of hormonal changes and activity in the reproductive organs, the ovary and uterus. And the cycle repeats every month. It lasts approximately 28 days. And the purpose of this is to prepare the woman for a possible pregnancy. So this overall cycle is referred to as the menstrual cycle. And the menstrual cycle can be divided into the ovarian cycle and the uterine cycle. The ovarian cycle describes the changes and development that occur in the ovary during the menstrual cycle that cause maturation of follicle, ovulation, and the development of the corpus luteum. So we're going to cover that in the ovulation lecture. So oocytes are in structures known as follicles. And we're going to go through in the ovulation lecture how these follicles, these Mike Wazowski looking structures, starting from a primordial follicle, develop into mature follicles and how ovulation occurs. So the release of a secondary oocyte and also how the corpus luteum develops. So that's the ovarian cycle, the changes that occur in the ovaries. And the uterine cycle describes a series of changes that happens to the lining of the uterus during a menstrual cycle. So the preparation and maintenance of the uterine lining. And we're going to go through that in the menstruation lecture. The menstrual cycle is controlled by the endocrine system and it's divided into three phases. The follicular phase, ovulation, and the luteal phase. And we're going to break this down in great detail in the ovulation lecture. So now let's subtract complexity and break down oogenesis. So oogenesis is the formation of an ovum in females and it occurs in the ovaries and similar to spermatogenesis it involves a series of cell phases. And we can divide it into three main phases. Okay, so the first stage is the multiplication phase by mitosis then the growth phase, and the last stage is the maturation phase, which involves the meiotic divisions. Let's begin with the first phase, which is the multiplication phase, proliferation, and differentiation by mitosis. Okay, so eukaryotic organisms have different number of chromosomes in the nucleus of the cell, referring to human somatic cells, so any cell in the body except the sperm and the egg, the reproductive cells, are diploid cells. They contain 46 chromosomes, 23 from the maternal side and 23 from the paternal side. Now, the number of chromosomes set can be, can be denoted as N. So a haploid cell means there's only one set of chromosomes or one copy, and diploid or 2N means it has two sets of chromosomes. So one set from the maternal side and one set from the paternal side. 
So during fetal development, before birth, primordial germ cells or oogonia, these are precursor stem cells in females, undergo mitosis. So are proliferating and differentiating to produce primary oocytes. So this primitive germ cell here is going to replicate to produce identical daughter cells. And it's going to differentiate it's going to differentiate into primary oocytes. And I'm going to explain in a second why this one looks different, but it's a primary oocyte. And oogonia stops dividing around the seventh month of gestation. So at birth, all the eggs, which are primary oocytes that the ovaries will release during the active reproductive years, are already present. So no new primary oocytes are created after birth. So in mitosis, the goal is to take the genetic material, the 46 chromosomes of primordial germ cells, and replicate it to produce two copies. And they're identical. So we've produced two identical cells here. Now, each of these two daughter cells have a full set of 46 chromosomes, and there are two chromatids per chromosomes. And these daughter cells will continue to divide again and again until around the seventh month of gestation. The fetal oogonia stops dividing, so there's a finite supply of ova, okay? Then this oogonium differentiates into a primary oocyte and will undergo the first meiotic division. So recall that meiosis consists of two cell divisions, meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. Let's go through this. The first meiotic division of this primary oocyte begins in utero, before birth, and it doesn't complete this division until puberty, until the individual begins the menstrual cycle. This cell is going to be paused in prophase 1, at a specific step in prophase 1, because prophase 1 can be subdivided into five other phases, okay? So this primary oocyte is arrested in prophase 1, and meiosis 1 will be completed just before ovulation happens. So primary oocytes are frozen in per phase one until puberty, and only those primary oocytes that will be ovulated will complete and finish the first meiotic division. Now, another important event that occurs before the eggs are arrested at per phase one is crossing over. Homologous chromosomes come together and they line up right next to each other and crossing over occurs. This is what's happening in this primary oocyte here. So what's happening is there is a recombination of genes on homologous chromosomes. The two non-sister chromatids undergo an exchange of sites of breakage, okay? And so the sister chromatids are no longer identical. After that, the cells are going to be arrested in prophase one until puberty. Okay, so now oogenesis enters the growth stage. And this process tends to be very long. At this stage, the primary oocytes will increase in size, and that's why this primary oocyte here is bigger. So then from birth to puberty, what happens? <laughs> Where do we go from here? At birth, the ovaries contain about two to four million eggs. And during childbirth, or during childhood, sorry, atresia, or cell death, occurs, leaving roughly 400,000 eggs at puberty. But only about 400 will be ovulated during the active reproductive years. So then we enter the reproductive years. And only those primary oocytes destined for ovulation will complete the first meiotic division. So how does this occur? How does one egg get selected each month to be ovulated? How does ovulation occur? We'll touch on this briefly because we're going to talk about this in great detail in the ovulation lecture. But essentially, inside the ovaries, the primary oocyte is inside the structure known as a follicle, an ovarian follicle. The role of follicles is to provide support for oocytes, and it starts off as a primordial follicle that contains one primary oocyte and it's arrested in prophase one of meiosis one. Then when puberty starts, the follicles are triggered to reinitiate development, okay? So follicle development signals the beginning of the menstrual cycle. The primordial, the primordial follicle transitions into a primary follicle and it develops supporting cells called granulosa cells and another layer called the zona pellucida. So the zona pellucida separates the oocyte 
from the granulosa cells, but they still remain in contact through gap junctions, which are intercellular channels, so that the granulosa cells can nourish the oocyte. And then from a primary follicle, it transitions into a secondary follicle. The granulosa cells are going to multiply and divide, creating multiple layers of granulosa cells, and it's also going to form a theca layer. And the antrum, which is this fluid-filled space, also starts developing. Okay, and so the granulosa cells and theca cells work together to support the oocyte and produce estrogen. So let's break down how this is coordinated. How do we control ovarian function? So at the start of the menstrual cycle, 10 to 15 primary follicles begin to develop under the stimulation of gonadotropins, which acts on the ovaries. So here's a cute diagram of a brain that I've drawn, and it involves the hypothalamus. So the hypothalamus, which is a small region of the brain, let's zoom in here, is going to stimulate gonadotropin-releasing hormone. GnRH, which are going to travel to the anterior pituitary gland via the hypothalamal hyperfecal portal vessels and trigger the release of luteinizing hormone, or LH, and follicle-stimulating hormone, FSH. And so FSH acts on granulosa cells and stimulate the granulosa cells to proliferate, okay, and multiply, divide. And LH acts on theca cells, stimulating the theca cells to also multiply and divide. Because the follicle is going to be supporting and nourishing the oocyte, so supporting its development. Now the granulosa cells and the theca cells work together to produce estrogen. The granulosa cells are deficient in the enzymes needed to produce the androgen precursors of estrogen, and so LH is going to act on the theca cells to trigger the synthesis of androgens from cholesterol. Then the androgens diffuse into the granulosa cells and are converted to estrogen. Okay, and so going back to this primary oocyte, if it's selected to become the dominant follicle, so this is the follicle that is going to be ovulated when ovulation occurs, every month 10 to 25 follicles develop into secondary follicles. And so day one to day seven of the menstrual cycle, multiple, multiple follicles develop. And around day seven of the cycle, only one of these follicles will be the dominant follicle. And this is the tertiary or graphian follicle. And from day seven to 14, this dominant follicle, which is currently a secondary follicle, will mature and transition into a graphian follicle. It will complete the first meiotic division, meiosis one, and turn into a tertiary follicle. And the primary oocyte becomes a secondary oocyte. And this occurs just before ovulation. Now, an important event that occurs just before ovulation is a luteinizing hormone surge, or LH surge. And this is triggered by the positive feedback of estrogen. Because if we come back here, as the follicle grows and the, gran and the granulosa cells multiply, they produce large amounts of estrogen, which causes an LH surge. And along with the secondary oocyte, the first polar body is also produced. So what's happening here is cytokinesis is unequal. So one daughter cell will take the entire cytoplasm and form the secondary oocyte. And the smaller one here is the first polar body. It's small and non-functional, so it will eventually degrade. Okay, now the secondary oocyte contains 23 chromosomes and still has two chromatids per chromosome, but they are no longer identical because of the crossing over that occurred just before the cell was arrested in prophase one. From here, the secondary oocyte starts meiosis to the second meiotic division, but it's arrested again, but this time it's arrested in metaphase 2 until fertilization occurs. And fertilization usually occurs in the fallopian tubes because the egg is viable for only 24 to 48 hours after ovulation. So then the secondary oocyte is then released from the ovary during ovulation, 24 to 36 hours after the LH surge. If fertilization occurs, the sperm penetrates the egg, the second meiotic division will be completed. So the secondary oocyte becomes a mature ovum, and a zygote will be produced that has 46 chromosomes. So 23 from the maternal, the oocyte, 
and 23 from the paternal, the spermatozoa. On top of that, the second polar body will also be produced. But similar to the first polar body, it's small and non-functional, so it'll eventually degrade. Then the two polar bodies that have no function, they're small, non-functional, will disintegrate at the end of meiosis II. And this oocyte here will become a mature ovum. And like in males, one primary spermatocyte produces four spermatozoa, whereas in females, one primary oocyte produces one ovum. Okay, and this ovum contains 23 one chromatid chromosome. And when a zygote is formed, it will contain 46 chromosomes, so 23 from the egg and 23 from the sperm. Now, the other phase of oogenesis that I haven't mentioned is the maturation phase. So the oocyte undergoes two maturation division. The first maturation is meiosis I, when the secondary oocyte and the first polar body are formed and the growth phase also occurs. And the second maturation division is during meiosis II when fertilization occurs. Okay, so we've covered a lot in this lecture. So now I wanna go back to the other diagram from the start of this lecture and briefly go through what happens to the remaining follicle after the egg is ovulated. Let's also do a quick recap on follicular growth and label these structures. So it starts off as a primordial follicle then develops into a primary follicle, then secondary follicle. The antrum here is starting to develop, so this fluid-filled space. And then on day seven of the menstrual cycle, only one follicle is selected to become the dominant follicle, also known as the graphene follicle. Then from day 14 to 15, ovulation occurs and the secondary oocyte is released and the follicle ruptures. The remaining follicle remains inside the ovary and it will eventually develop into the corpus luteum, which has important functions. And we're gonna cover that in the ovulation ovarian cycle lecture. So that is oogenesis. In this lecture, we learned that oogenesis can be divided into three main phases. The proliferation phase by mitosis, the growth phase, and lastly, the maturation phase. We learned how oogonia stops dividing around seventh month of gestation, and so no new primary oocytes will be produced after birth. We broke down how primary oocytes are arrested in prophase one, but before prophase one, crossing over occurs. Once the first meiotic division is completed, the second meiotic division begins, but the cell is arrested again in metaphase two until fertilization occurs. Thank you for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe to EKG Science so you don't miss a single lecture. And remember, subtract complexity and slow down. To study the next lecture, simply click the next video or you can view the entire playlist. Hey, stop procrastinating.